Um, you guys rock. This is, my name is Anders. I got Craig here from the Bake Me Steel Test Kitchen. Super pumped because we actually have a new product launch from, um, if you guys are on our email list or you saw it on Facebook, we launched our new pan. Um, and speaking of Paris, this is made in France. Super exciting. Our company, our partner is called De Buyer. De Buyer, I'm probably saying that wrong. Get that De right. Buyer. De Buyer. Uh, and it's a carbon steel pan, which is the same material that we make our baking steel from. And believe me, we tried to make this in the family business. It was just really outside of our strike zone without making huge investments. So we found an incredible partner to produce these with us. And um, can't see it here, but we've got our, both of our names on the back. This is a 10 inch pan. And that means that it's 10 inches from you know diameter here, outside edge to outside edge. The cooking flat cooking surface is about seven and a quarter, I believe. Um, and we're gonna be having different sizes available too. And this pan totally rocks. It's like, it does everything that, um, like that our baking steel probably wouldn't do. And we're gonna show you a good example of that in class here in just a few minutes. Uh, if anybody has purchased one, the good news is they are now in stock and shipping probably 24 hours after you order. Uh, we've got a batch of these and they will sell out. So if you are interested in these, I would pull that trigger sooner rather than later because our next batch likely won't be here until the first of the year. Uh, so anyway, it's uh, a great pan. It's heavy. It's like four pounds. It's light. It's our version. It's carbon steel, guys, like our version of cast iron. And, you know, we all like cast iron cooking. It's been around forever. But what this pan does is essentially it's, um, it's a really dense material. So it's going to heat up really quick. And like our baking steel, once it gets hot, it stays hot. There's not going to be any hot or cold um, areas in the pan itself. Super consistent heat, incredible heat transfer, and incredibly durable. It's going to last forever, like our steel. Um, so um, when you do order this pan, I want to take you through it a little bit. It's coated with like a beeswax. So just take it to your sink and wash it with soap and water. And then what you're going to do, and you know, we include instructions with this. We're going to season it um, before we use it. Our baking steel comes seasoned. The carbon steel pan um, needs to be seasoned. And the way we do that is a couple of ways. One, we wash it and then we oil it and we stick it in the oven, um, which is kind of how we've outlined in our instructions. The second way of doing that is to literally just use it, which is what we're going to do today. Um, and again, we're going to season this thing. Eventually, it's going to get really dark. Like here's another version of the same pan. Um, this one's been used, it's, it's about a week old. I just got these in. Um, and you can see how dark it gets. What's nice about this pan is that the handles are stainless steel. So um, it's not gonna get super hot to the touch. It's also oven safe. So I can just literally stick this in the oven if I'm you know, basting a filet or something. I can stick this whole pan into the oven and it will be oven safe, probably up to easily up to 500 degrees, not a problem, like our baking steel. Uh, super efficient too, okay? Uh, do we have any questions on that yet um, before I get into making a quick dish for you guys? Uh, dimensions, overall length, including the tape. Uh, good question, overall length. Um, I haven't had a tape measure, okay. Uh, so looking at about 20, about 19 and a quarter inches, depending how you measure it. It's called 20 inches from end to end. What's the difference between cast iron and carbon steel? Ah, good question. So interesting enough, um, I am a steel guy. So I've worked in my family business is steel and steel. And we make products out of um, low carbon steel. We make it for construction equipment. Like so the likes of our customer base would be Caterpillar, John Deere. So I've been doing this in my dad's business for years and years. And we fabricate products made out of steel, incredibly durable. Um, the products that we make for backhoes, um, we have some competitors that also kind of replicate our product out of cast iron. And guess what happens to cast iron when it's under extreme duress? 
um, it's very breakable. It, in other words, it's, it's brittle. Um, not to say your cast iron pans are gonna break, they won't, because there's not enough stress in a kitchen. Hopefully not enough stress. However, um, you will find hot and cold spots in cast iron. It's just the, the way the steel is made. It's a cheaper process, so it, it became, it's poured metal. It can have hot and cold spots in it. And our low carbon steel is literally just, um, it's plated steel that gets formed into this shape. And that's, you can see they got rivets here to attach a handle to it. It's almost like, like welding in, in a sense. Um, so what this does is that this steel is really dense. It's got like a, they call it a really high thermal diffusivity where the, the transfer of energy is super um, intense. 20 times that of like a pizza stone. In the case of cast, I think it's like 10 times the amount of cast iron. So it just works better, um, less hot and cold spots. That was, a, and it's, you know, so in any case, this is a little bit lighter, um, thinner, and it just, it works just as well, or if not better than a cast iron pan would. Um, how hot of an oven for steaming? Um, depending on the oil. What I would personally do is just, you know, I'd pour my oil in, oil in and I'll take some paper towels um, and I would just kind of wipe it in. I would like to use avocado oil or flaxseed oil and I would put the oven at around 400 degrees for like an hour and just leave it in there, um, remove it. It's gonna be like a, a goldish tint in the beginning, kind of like your baking steel was. And eventually after, you know, two or three sessions, it's gonna turn really dark and carbonized and turn black. And that's when it becomes like, what's great about these pans is that it's naturally, it's literally iron. So it's naturally gonna be non-stick as you season it. No chemicals, which makes it beautiful. Does the handle have a coating like the other DeBuyer pans? It does not. We purposely wanted pure metal. We decided on stainless, it makes it um, a, a really nice metal. But what does, it doesn't conduct all the way out here. So if I'm cooking on it, um, I still probably want to use a towel, but I don't need to. If I touched it by accident, it's not going to be super hot. So I guess it wouldn't be an accident at that point, right? Um, but anyway, that's, it's not coating oven safe. Uh, what's the difference between the baking steel and the standard divider? Um, it depend, I, I mean, one, we went with the thickest gauge material. So it's like a three millimeter. Um, it's as thick as you make on a, on a pan. And we wanted that because it's more, it's gonna match. And there's other Debyer pans. They're all awesome guys. They're, they're a great company. They make great products. We just went with a heavier duty version of the heaviest duty they do. Um, and we went with a stainless handle. Do they have a version like this? I don't know. Um, I know a lot of these have a coating on their handles. Um, we made it as unique as we could um, with the co-brand. And it's beautiful guys. It's, it's just a great pan. Super, really happy about it, really proud. Does it work on induction? Yes, so um, let me get something for you. A magnet, this is how you test if something's gonna be uh, working on induction. This is metal, magnetic, see that? So that means it's gonna really work really well with that induction um, burner. Great, yes. I noticed your pan is slightly lighter in the center than one you're using. Will it eventually get completely dark? Oh yeah, that's just from me cleaning it. Um, that's all. Yes, and I've, in fact, this is you can't really see it. You get a little gloss to that. I've actually wiped some oil into this after I cleaned it, just to kind of keep it nice and um, like I do my baking steel. Same exact idea is after my clean my baking steel. I like to wipe a little bit of oil on both sides so a thing has got like this um, force field. It's just always gonna keep that steel protected. And that's why we oil it. Um, I don't really do anything to the backside here. It's naturally in that heat all the time to keep it protected. But yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna change eventually. I and mean, I can clean this off too. I can take my cleaning bricks and really scrub it. Um, but I like it, I mean, it's got a nice patina to it. It's beautiful. And I'm gonna show you the differences here. And see, and this I can make this look like this in like two hours. A couple of dishes. That's all it takes. All right, should we jump into? Let's jump right into it. I'm gonna move over um, to the oven. 
you guys can see what's going on here. Um, take my pan. I'm going to throw some pasta in. I've got some water boiling next to me here. I'm just going to place the pasta in. It's going to take about six or seven minutes. Water's boiling. Meantime, can you see me okay, Chef? I'm going to fire up my, um, can, you see, can you see the burner okay? Is that good? I'm going to literally take some oil. I'm using avocado oil. I'm just going to put some, lightly coat the bottom. That's a good idea. Maybe turn the lights off now. Is that good? Or? Okay. Um, I've got my pan on kind of up on about medium heat. So I'm going to give this a couple of minutes and then I'm going to toss some garlic in. Too bad you guys can't smell, but this is going to be incredible. Um, put my pasta in next here. Oh, there we go. And once my oil gets, you know, like a, you know, start to sizzle a little bit, almost, I'm almost there. By the way, I made some, um, I made some fried dough with leftover pizza dough in the avocado oil last week. Like I made some just little like donut holes, unbelievable. It's nice to be able to do a little frying, I guess, inside of our uh, test kitchen now, which we weren't able to do before, but now we're kind of fully stocked. We can make pretty much anything. Um, you can see my oil's picking up, starting to sizzle a little bit. These dishes, by the way, used by you know French chefs and chefs all over the place, all over the, in the restaurant kitchens, they kind of finish their pasta dishes in these pans. Right, Chef? Put some garlic in. Use some wooden spoons now. Lightly kind of saute my garlic. Tomatoes. Can I smell that? If I'm having an induction, I'm, I'm, um, I want to make sure I'm keeping my pan down on the, on the glass the whole time. You're not, I'm just kind of do a flip. And if I feel like adding some, um, some seasoning, now's a good time to do that. Um, if you like cooked basil, etc., I'm just kind of frying my um, tomatoes up a little bit. I might drop the heat just a, a tad. It smells incredible. Put my pasta. Any other questions coming on? Sizing. Yeah, we're gonna. Well, as we get rolling here, we're gonna probably um, add some sizes. We're gonna probably go a larger version of this, um, and then some smaller ones. Really, they go. Uh, we call this number ten. There'll be a number twelve. There'll be a number eight. Which this kind of identifies the width of these uh, pans. Really happy with this. Is a great size for small families. And um, if I'm making, you know, multiple dishes, I might just add. Two pans of the same thing, right? Ingredients. Or one of my kids doesn't like tomatoes, he likes um, whatever it might be, right? Smells incredible. Wok is going to be on our list as well. We'll be adding that. Huh? Oh, is that right? Yeah. We'll be adding a wok at some point too. Yes. Smells so nice, by the way. Um, 
I actually fried up last week, we actually fried up, made some onion rings in our pans and we actually topped our pizza with onion rings, which is pretty awesome. So I'm thinking fried calamari pizza would be a good idea, right? Chef? Yeah. Oh. All right, so now, um, Kind of expedite this. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait another, another minute. We'll get the coffee done. I might want to eat this lunch today. Yes. Um, so if you want to fry an egg or something, this pan becomes naturally non-stick. I say that, but you might still need some fat underneath it. Usually, even on our baking steel, even on a pan, you yeah, even on a nonstick pan, you still need some fat underneath it just to kind of help it kind of get going to keep a, you know, a little bit of a barrier. Otherwise, it's going to get glued to it. Um, so just be mindful of that for sure. You can, you know, you can basically do your, your omelets. And I, if I want to, you know, my son was basting a fillet in here. Um, and all that means is he was taking. You know, he had his fillet, he seared his fillet, and he was just kind of adding, kind of adding this spoonful of to the top and throughout his cooking process. So we're really getting some nice flavors in there. Pour on, pour the sauce on, you know, afterwards. You can throw some butter down in here if you'd like. Um, it just kind of gives us a, a new way of cooking our products beyond just pizzas. And literally now I can just take this pasta and throw it right in the dish, All right? This is how I'll finish it. And this little saute, a little Parmesan cheese, some basil, boom. Got some nice fresh burrata in there, All right? And there's our pop, nice pasta dish. Gorgeous, beautiful, tasty. Smells amazing. Um, you can eat it right out of the bowl in our case. You can see, I guess, can you see the colors of this? Chef, can you see them? Which one the colors did? Chilter, turn on. It's gorgeous, right? Amazing. So, like, the possibilities are obviously, we want to do something really simple today. The possibilities are endless. I like the combination of using the pan and uh, donuts. Um, searing meats. Yeah, searing your meats, omelets, like fire. donuts. Can I say donuts again? Yeah. I say that because on Friday I was making some doughs and I had some leftover dough. So really quickly I just kind of heated up some avocado oil and then just seared the bread or the dough for maybe a minute or two um, and dipped it in powdered sugar just incredible, like incredible the things that you can do and kind of using the baking steel and the pans. Um, again, the possibilities are endless. So fun. Any more questions, you guys? Uh, last one I have is, do you need to season both sides or just the inside of the pan? I find really, to be honest, just the inside is all you need because, you know, the more you use it like your steel, the better it's gonna be. But um, just like our griddles, our baking steel griddles, um, Mine stay on the stove top. So I, um, I never season the back side of it because it's literally on the flame, which is a really dry environment. So after that initial seasoning, I haven't added to these griddles almost ever, I don't think. Um, this, a little bit of oil in the beginning, um, but then again, it's gonna get really dark and stay dark once you get that initial uh, seasoning. I would put a little, I would wipe a little oil on this though, for sure in the beginning. Once you do that once, it's kind of done. And if it does, you know, oxidize or something, just put it, you know, use your barkeeper's friend, your grill bricks, whatever, and bring it back to life again. It's amazing. Awesome, you guys. Thank you. Any questions, send us an email, info at Baking Steel. You guys rock. Thank you. Super grateful for you. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>